Hello everybody, it's me, Nate, a.k.a. Devil Dog, and I'm back with another game review. This time I'm reviewing Concrete Genie. Yep, that's right, I know it's a super old game, but I never did a review of this, and since this is one of the games you received for free for PlayStation Plus games of February 2021, I decided it deserved a review. So here it is, Concrete Genie. It was developed by Pixelopus, I hope I said it right, and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment, and is originally released on the PS4 back on October 8th of 2019. What to say about Concrete Genie? It's a very unique game, a beautiful game. It'll take you anywhere from four to six hours long on the main adventure, where you play as Ash, a young boy who goes around solving puzzles, avoiding bullies, all the while while using your doodling to paint artwork on the walls of his town to try to bring life back to the dying town of Denska. Now, the main thing is about this title, as you can see, it is visually quite appealing. I love its art style. It To me, it has almost like an art style similar to that of a uh, Double Fine game, almost like Psychonauts. And in fact, the creators said that they were very highly inspired by the game Jet Set Radio when they made this. And it does kind of show with the way of the style of the animation and the way it, it looks overall, the, you know, just the art style of it. Now, honestly, when it comes down to the control of this game, it's one thing I have to kind of point out. You do move Ash around with your normal analog stick, one to move and one to move the camera around, interacting by being able to jump and do stuff like that. But the main draw with this is any sort of flat surface uh, that go on the buildings, and even some floors and some other stuff, you can do the, quote, painting mechanic, where you'll actually bring up the little icons and you can actually... Um, make uh, characters, make uh, monsters of all kinds of different uh, kinds of monsters, and actually design them with a certain amount of add-on parts. Now, and the thing that's really kind of cool about it is you actually can create these creatures in a rather unique way. Uh, you can go and place certain parts in pretty much just about any location you want, and bending, you know, bending them around corners and stuff like that. And uh, once you eat, uh, reach a limit, they only allow you to use so many parts on a uh, you know, one of these, you know, monsters you create. But once you do, you can bring it to life. And these genies, as they're called, uh, will help you in solving puzzles and also help you progress through the game's story. And it has to do a lot heavily based off of uh, bullying and also life and memories in general. And is a rather charming game, honestly. It um, can bring kind of a tear to your eye in a certain you know, way it's presented. Um, the thing that's really interesting about these genies is depending on what colors that you are allowed to use as you progress through, you get more options, of course, that gives them different powers. Naturally, if you give like one genie and you paint him blue, he might be like a wind or an ice related sort of creature. Or if you have one who's red, he'll be fire based. And like I said, you use these guys that are like living, breathing um, graffiti, so to say, that'll move and wrap around the walls, that'll help you get through these puzzles as you go through, and you basically decorate, you know, Denska and bring this town back to life. Um, now, the one thing that's weird is, like I said, the control is when you're actually playing the game, when you start, quote, painting, it's when you use your, your dual shock um, with the movement control. Now, if you're not a fan of the movement control feature of the DualShock, you're not going to like this. It doesn't have any other options for you to do this, but you have to actually tilt and move your controller to actually move the on-screen icon around like your paintbrush to actually paint certain things. And once you get used to how sensitive and finicky it is, you can go in and adjust that in the options menu. Um, it's not that bad, but if you've never been a fan of the move controls on a DualShock, you probably won't like that. Uh, I mean, like I said, and since this is one of the main components of this game, of you going around this city that, that keeps opening up new sections to it, that you end up decorating and doing missions and collecting pages of your book back and creating new creatures, um, it, it is a charming game if you can get used to the, the control, the way it actually, you know, 
uh, operates. But besides that, it's actually a brilliantly done game. It's beautiful. It's got a really nice story to it. And I love the way that the animation of these genies are and how they interact with you even though they're stuck in a wall, basically, or, or a ceiling or floor or whatnot. Um, it's very charming. It does have a lot of, um, you know, different abilities in terms of you creating these creatures. Like I said, you know, the different, you know, you know ingredients or the different things you pick to apply to it, uh, how you apply it, where, if you move it with an angle, it does actually allow a good amount of versatility to create your own custom creatures. And um, the other thing that's really cool about it is it also comes with a VR component. So if you have a PlayStation VR, you can go in and play, play this uh, VR mode. Like I said, the uh, um, actual single player game will take you anywhere from four to six hours. It's not really a super long game. And the VR mode is rather short as well. Um, now, the VR mode consists of you having to use move controllers. You cannot use a dual shock. So to play the VR mode, you need to have two move controllers and a PlayStation VR headset, of course. And it's basically you're in a room with splotch. You know, this one character uh, that's uh, pretty much on your backpack um, from you know the single player experience and you get to create art in different areas like different rooms and it'll consist of basically okay like the first part light up all the lights and um, you can actually go and create a lot of neat stuff but the one thing I learned though is at least early on when it's just asking you to quote fill up a meter as in like light up all the lights you can just spam one thing all the way across the ceiling and just light up the lights and get through the level even faster so it, it does allow for a little bit of neat stuff uh, but it's not until you get to the final part of the VR section where it actually gets really really cool um, most of it isn't really that heavy on the VR aspects, you know, except for stuff flying at you and stuff. Uh, but once you get to the final part of the, uh, the this area, it opens up, I think it's called the Crystal Field. Uh, that is actually very impressive because it's a true VR experience where you're in this beautiful field with your little buddy and it's got different little missions that you need to do like you know plant a tree here grow some fruit plant a bunch of weeds um, you know make some you know, grass you know make lightning and as you progress they'll, they'll keep giving you more pieces of your notebook that will open up new uh, things that you can draw you know, like you know, like I said, plant a tree, make a rainbow, uh, turn it from day to night. You know, add stars to the sky. Um, you know, have wind blow through these reeds. Uh, you know, grow grass, and it looks very impressive in VR. I would love to see a full game uh, somehow managing to have you be able to move as well. Uh, in this in VR. Uh, it, it's actually uh, really impressive. The first couple parts of the VR, I, I, I'm like, okay, this is nice, but it wasn't really that special. But once you get to that 3D crystal open area, th that actually shows what really could be done with this uh, feature. And it's really cool. I mean, hands down, I absolutely love it. Now, It'll only take you maybe 20, 30 minutes tops to get through the VR section. And when you do, it will unlock a free paint mode where you can go back in several different areas of the town and also back in a 3D crystal area and just have fun doing whatever you want with uh, all the stuff unlocked. And uh, it's a wonderful diversion. You know, if you have someone who... Uh, is not really uh, liking VR. I could actually recommend that they play the uh, 3D crystal area in this. It is very relaxing. It's very beautiful and charming, and it's very easy. In fact, I find it way easier to paint stuff with the move controllers than the Dual Shock. That's one thing that I have to say that hands down I absolutely love about the VR portion is. The control with the, the move controllers is rather seamless. It's so much easier to pick stuff and paint and draw and make stuff with the move controllers. I wish there was a better uh, controller setup in the single player experience. I mean, it still works and functions just fine. But after playing the VR uh, section with the move controllers, I got spoiled with that. And going back to the single player, it, it, it wasn't as fun. It was a little bit more disappointing. Don't get me wrong. 
it's still a beautiful game. It, it is a fun game to play. It's charming. You can get some good trophies out of this title. It's not a long game at all. And like I said, the main story focuses on remembering a, a pleasant past and trying to bring it to the current future, saving a town, also while trying to avoid and get rid of bullies. Now, in the end, it's uh, got a pretty decent touching story to it. And uh, hands down, it is a fun and really unique title, and I can recommend that you can play it, especially if, since it's a PlayStation Plus game of February. If you haven't played Concrete Genie before, or you didn't have a PSVR at the time, I can definitely say, go ahead and I recommend that you download and play it now. It's actually a pretty good game. This was Nate, a.k.a. Devil Dog. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. Please leave in the comments below if you played Concrete Genie before. What do you think of this game? Uh, were you able to really make some interesting looking monsters in this title? And uh, do you think it deserves a sequel? Yeah, that, that's a good question. And remember, make sure to hit the bell icon to stay updated whenever I release any new videos. Give me a thumbs up if you like this review. And remember, I always end my videos by saying, have fun, play hard, and remember people, the devil is in the details. Peace out until next time.